Seven years ago, a girl walked into a commune storytelling event and she told us a story which was called the unsolved equation. In a very, very disarming manner, she spoke about being groped by a teacher when she was very, very young. The audience watching that show didn't know whether they should clap or they should cry. In fact, a hushed silence took over the room. A month passed. We received an email from the same girl. After seeing her story online, a few friends had reached out to her and had asked her, why did you confront the teacher who had taken unfair advantage of your trust when you were so young? This girl had been troubled by a chronic backache ever since her childhood. Encouraged by her friends, she went to her teacher's house. Now a very, very old man who just cried and begged for her forgiveness. And incredibly, this girl had the heart to forgive. But the miracle that happened post the confrontation was what she wrote to us in the mail. Her backache disappeared. This girl who had had a chronic backache for years, carrying the burden of that secret inside, carrying that space of mistrust inside her, had got that backache because possibly she wasn't able to carry the burden of that story with her. And this is what we do at Commune. We create a safe space where everyone is willing to cross a boundary or a barrier. What will they say? Am I good enough? Will I be judged? Should I share my story? Should I share my dreams? Should I share my nightmares? This is a place we built for artists and amateurs to come to be the best version of themselves. In my entire life, this is what I am most proud of today. Often we receive emails and messages, just like the one I told you about for giving stories and dreams a home. Some are about people discovering their art. Some are about people erasing the boundaries that existed between them and someone else. Some are about conquering new worlds. We give stories and dreams a home. And for a creative gypsy like myself, this home is perhaps a memory of the home that I always carry with me. You see, I'm a, I'm a small town boy. I started my journey in Lucknow. And there my home with my two parents who were teachers was non-judgmental and inspirational. On anything, conversations were encouraged. Discussions happened over cups of chai, copious cups of chai on our future, on religion, on career, on food, ghazals, music, cinema, you name it. An audio cassette, which my dad used to bring possibly every fortnight, heard on a Panasonic tape recorder, was our concert. And it was very often even our film, because we would listen to audio tapes with dialogues and imagine what the film must have been like. All of this played in the theater of my mind. But these were all elements of my safe space. And today when I look back on what we have created, I somehow feel that commune is a recreation of this space. Indulge me a little bit. I was 14 when I got into a debating team in school, which no one had ever applied for in class nine because it was an unspoken boundary, which I didn't know of. Nobody had told me. At 16, I mustered the courage to tell my parents I did not want to be a doctor. I was fabulous at dissections. But the boundary of this is the done thing was erased by my father, who perhaps had seen his own dream erased on the altar of convention. I was 21 when fresh out of Hindu college in Delhi University, I decided a media career was formed. Now today for you, this might seem like no surprise, but imagine 1988 
when the world to me was limited to doordarshan and all india radio would my boundary be to stay within the ambit of state sponsored content or deliver the 9 pm news without a single emotion on my face but you know what happened new worlds arose fm cable television happened new worlds beckoned take the risk succeed that seems to be the story that i hear all the time but to take that risk to succeed you need to keep breaking boundaries i see so many shark tank memes every day but do you realize that you all had your own shark tank which comprised those people who were your neighborhood papa ji mama ji sharma wal pados pados wale sharma uncle who are always more concerned and more worried for your future your safety and you always had to ask for that vote of confidence that please give me the chance to chase my dreams this neighborhood shark tanks is where all of you won the lottery if you are doing what you love to do and here lies my first basic thought to you your personality does not define you neither as your birth your caste your gender your geography what defines you is what boundaries you are willing to ignore what you are willing to say yes to and what you are willing to say no to to many of us at various points in our career are evaluating safe options well charted paths we do not want to jump into the new and often we do not want to commit when i walked into all india radio and was thrown the gauntlet by the head of fm can you deliver a radio show to me in 2 days i had the same choice i could have turned around and said give me more time let me make you the best show in the world possible you know I- i'll do what i can but i need in the given time i will do my best i look back today and say that that was a great show with the constraints i had it wasn't the taj mahal but it was a small i did it sar ka taj for me a crown for myself don't try to make the taj mahal or the mona lisa your version of what you are good at is enough for the moment as we are speaking i just received a message which said that the 12th show of a musical that i am creative producer for has just finished to a standing ovation in new delhi i am in bombay at the moment seven months ago i had a chance meeting with a director in dubai i watched her play and asked her to have a coffee with me my reason was that to find an artist with such a mastery over her art form was just incredible and i wanted to know more we met to share to share our views our values we laughed at what we wished for we laughed at what had not happened in our lives we spoke of theatrical mishaps and imposters posing as authors in the arts no work was negotiated no deal was signed before contracts you need to make human contact and that's what we did i found a little place in her mind and she found a very special place in mine a safe space where dreams and possibilities were shared and frankly there were no boundaries we were busy exploring like children a month later it just so happened that i received a call about a possible musical that needed to be staged in new delhi the same one that i'm talking about just now i realized i had the perfect collaborator for the same in no time both of us were pulling out our diaries for that list of people that we had always wanted to work with you know we all have a little black book of names of people that we want to work with the idea and the opportunity was so challenging that it just kept us awake at night and that is most exciting about collaborations where you don't have these boundaries where you don't start with the if and the but the sheer possibility the audacity of what you can create if you reach for the impossible if you use others as the giants on whose shoulders you stand to see a different horizon find your forest and find your tribe 
Each of you will have your own unique forest. You will have your own unique tribe. I am blessed to have many friends who are creators. Zakir Khan is much younger than me. He's a sitar player. He's an actor, a writer, a storyteller, and what many of you may know him as, a comedian. Ankur Tiwari, my friend who has just finished the music supervision of the film Geharaiya and for that Gali Boy, is a writer, a director, a music supervisor, a singer, a songwriter, a fashion icon as well. It is the age of the multi-hyphenates. It is the age of the polymaths. The old adage, adage of doing one thing well, I'm sure still applies. I definitely think it applies to pure sciences. But art explores. It makes you dip your feet into a stream or take the plunge into a deep pool. You know, when you first learn how to swim and your feet stop touching the ground and you start floating, and you're partly floating or partly sinking, there's this delicious feeling of fear and freedom. This is where art resides, between fear and freedom. So seek new waters, thrash about. Maybe you will be an ace swimmer, or maybe you'll just have fun floating and scratching your belly. Frolic is enough. Be a multi-hyphenate. As Amit Verma, my favorite podcast host says, we contain multitudes. You are not just one thing. You're not just your profession. You're not just your city. You're not just your gender. You're not just your religion. You are multitudes. You know, post this talk, I'm going to be eating an artisanal heirloom recipe from a ready-to-cook pack I received as part of a gift box from a website. This connection began five weeks ago with an email in my inbox. I often talk about mentoring. I often talk about that my job today is to connect people to possibilities. I received this email which said, would you find time to mentor me? And I said, what do you seek mentorship in? And the person said, you know what? Now that you've answered, give me a week. I want to come back to you with a proper presentation. There was a one hour slot that I had kept for this, but it went on for about three hours because the person was just absolutely wonderful working on multiple projects in space design, in, in art and food. And then right at the end, there was this one new venture called Sanduk, where this girl was recreating the regional recipes that traditionally take our parents hours to make, but are so close to our heart. Now she had created, as the website says, a feast without a fuss. A week later, I was in Delhi. I managed to meet the person. She came to me wearing gifts. And I now had a whole bunch of those lovely, ready to eat gravies, which you could cook. In an hour, in my kitchen, this will be something that I could devour. Imagine what would have happened if I had just said no. So helping others is very often helping yourself. Opening doors for someone else shows you something on the other side as well. This ability to say yes to possibility, to never let any barrier or boundary stand in my way is, is something that defines me as a creator and as an artist. You know, very often when I'm at get-togethers and there are lots of people around and I meet all kinds of people, my wife nudges me. She says, again, you have that blank look on your face. Sometimes it's true. But sometimes I'm living in a future and have left the present. Ideas excite us. Bridges excite us. The possibility of being time travelers in someone else's time machine is why I invest today in startups. I have a huge portfolio of startups. I and mean, people ask me saying, so did you invest in this because of the uh, capital gain that you would have or you know the 10x opportunity? No, no, money is the last thing on my mind. It is the idea. It is the wormhole that takes me into someone else's imagined world that makes me tingle inside. Listen to the futurists and live your dreams through them. If you've taken a seat on someone else's airplane, then enjoy the ride, see what they are seeing, and sometimes roll up your sleeves and say, how can I help? A word of caution. 
I have always been a great communicator. That's what people say. I talk well. I tell stories well. But only shiny objects don't attract attention. All talkers are not creators. There is a need sometimes to find people who may not be able to articulate their ideas in words, but maybe some other form, which is their skill. This requires you to be patient and to be an idea whisperer. Give people the ability when you are judging them or when you are working with them, judging may not be such a good word, to present their best self in the medium that they love. Do not place a boundary. Do not ask them for a resume. Do not ask them for a PowerPoint presentation. What if they want to share their profile on Instagram? What if they want to share their resume in a song? What if they want to do it on an Excel sheet? Allow them that freedom. Let them showcase themselves in the best form that they can. Not every creator needs to be a performing artist who entertains. You can be a quiet deliverer of greatness. Lastly, while what I'm really trying to do is to unshackle your mind, to make you find your safe space when you go out from your institute or anywhere in life, I just want to rein you in on one thing. As a creator, you do not need to create all the time. Take a pause. Refill yourself. Mid-career breaks, wellness holidays, setting time aside every day for yourself is of paramount importance to sustain your creative side as well as to tackle burnout on the other end. To produce, we must give ourselves time to consume, to assimilate, to repackage. Don't just skim the surface, dive deep, experiment with different mediums, practice. I take so many breaks. I go down rabbit holes every morning and I don't know where they will lead me to, but I come back with the smell of fresh grass, fresh ideas, and I come back with my hands dirty. These are sometimes my lotus eater moments. There will be other days to be Ulysses. For one moment, I can just be a lotus eater. You need both. Pause to breathe in life. That is very, very important. As you go out from an institute, from any place of learning, you will be slotted, you will be typecast. But if you can give the idea that is whispering in your ear, one listen. And if you can try and make it come true, without any boundary, without any barrier, anyone can be a creator. You don't need to always be credible to create. You just need to be purposeful. Find your purpose. Find what you're looking to do. And do not let any boundary shackle you. Thank you.